Welcome to this digital gathering of the Belong Collective. We are so happy that you are with us. The Belong Collective is an inclusive, Jesus-shaped community practicing the way of love for the good of all. If you would like more information about us, please go to our website at thebelongcollective.org. If you're new with us, there is a connect tab and there is a card there that we ask that you fill out so that we're able to keep you up to date on all of our online happenings like our book club, our digital gatherings on Sunday, all of those events. While you're on the website, if you would like to support us financially, there is a Give tab, and you can do that right through the website. And we do have an online store, so there is some merchandise available in there, and you're welcome to check that out as well. We love to connect with you on social media, so please check out the Belong Collective on Facebook. There is actually a separate private group, and this is a place where we can connect with each other in this time of separation. So if you would like added to that, please feel free to email us either through the website or you can contact us through that Facebook page. You can also find us on Instagram at The Belong Graham, and please just tag us and share what's going on with you. We love to see what's happening. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hello and good morning. Welcome to the Belong Collective. Pastor Justin here. I've got my mustache mug. Uh, let me take a sip out of it. You'll Hopefully I lined that up right to where it looked like I had a mustache while I was taking a sip of my coffee. That's one of my, that was a Father's Day mug gift. That was a pro Father's Day mug gift right there. Um, a few announcements uh, just before we get started with the uh, Life Connection portion for today as we close out our Values series. Um, first announcement, next week is Easter and we're really excited about it. We did post an update video if you didn't get a chance to check that out. Hopefully you were able to. We talked a little bit about the violence going on in our world, about um, our American Asian brothers and sisters who are experiencing that. And I shared just a little bit from the heart about that. But we also shared about on the back end of that about Easter and this year. Easter is not going to be something that can happen in person. We had worked on that, tried for that, not something that's going to take place. But next week, we really are hoping to put together a meaningful digital gathering. We'll be bringing music back. It'll be a little longer, um, but it'll be something that hopefully you and the family can enjoy uh, this Easter season. So hopefully uh, you're able to join us next week for that. And then um, I also wanted to let you know, and this is something that usually... um, I don't put these things out here, so we'll keep this on the down low, okay? This is between you and me. Um, But many of you know Marge, and Marge is one of like, um, I don't know, she's the uh, the matriarch of the Belong Collective, and um, and, uh, she's amazing. Uh, If you've had interactions with Marge, you love Marge. It's just just a reality. Um, But uh, a little over a week ago, Marge took a fall at her house, and um, and I've been in contact with Marge since, and we've... we've, um, we stayed in contact, but I found out where she's staying for rehab. And I thought it could be really cool. It, visitors aren't allowed. Like I'm not even allowed to go visit um, just with all the COVID protocols and, and such. Um, but I thought it might be really cool if maybe our community, the Belong Collective, flooded her with letters. So here's the deal. Um, if you want to uh, send her a message, uh, write her a letter. Direct message me, Justin Douglas, either on my Instagram or on Facebook or direct message The Belong Collective and let me know and I'll get you the address um, so that you can send her a letter. Uh, I don't really want to put it out here on the video, but what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll, I'll direct message you back the address or you can email me, Justin, at thebelongcollective.org and if you email me, I'll send it right back to you so that you can send her just a letter of encouragement. She's doing well. She's in rehab. Um, but, uh, but hopefully that'll be an opportunity for her to just feel some love from the Blind Collective community. You might not know Marge. You might be like, Marge doesn't even know who I am. It doesn't matter. Send her a note. Let her know you're thinking of her and that she needs to get well soon. We all love Marge, and I think it'd be really awesome uh, for her to experience some extra love from this community during this time. All right, so now we're going to move on to finishing out our values series. We've been in this series titled Belong for a while where we've been talking about 
our values at the Belong Collective. And hopefully you've got a chance to check this out. You can always go to our website and read our values and also read the um, kind of paragraph under each value that kind of dives deeper to explain exactly what it means. But today is our very last value. So let me read it for us. It is giving compassionately. And here's what the paragraph says. The generosity of Jesus was birthed out of a compassion for others. We desire to grow in compassion for one another and see our generosity flow out of that compassion. We know that compulsory giving out of guilt produces a spirit of resentment and compassionate giving out of love produces a spirit of excitement and connectedness. There are many ways to give through volunteering time, providing a particular skill, or financial donations. It is our desire that all of these efforts come from a place of love rather than pressure. Have you ever felt pressured to give in any situation? Let's just remove even the church from it. Like, have you ever felt just this pressure to, um, (laughs) to give like I, we've all, we've all kind of been cornered. And, and one of the things that I think is actually where I experience pressure to give the most is like my information where like, you're at a store or something and there's a booth there and then the person's like, hey, I can save you so much on, ener- on on your energy bill or I can save you so much on this or hey, sign up for my thing or whatever. And and they like they do this like high sales pitch to try to get your information so that they can follow up with you and contact you or or a survey. It'll only be five minutes, you know, and 20 minutes later, you're still filling out a survey. We all get pressured to give things, whether that's our information, our time our resources, money, we're, we're, it's just a reality um, in our world. And it can really feel like you build up this feeling of resentment when you're constantly having to, in relationships that mean a lot to you, having to kind of give out of that feeling of pressure. Um, what's uh, the flip side of that is when you see a need and you're like, what can I do to help? Maybe it's something that's connected to you or something that you're really passionate about or you just love this person so much that you just really want to help them or you see what they're passionate about and you want to help further something that they have going on. So in our world, um, one of the things that's true is when we give to what we're connected to, um, in that place, our spirit is really, really, really engaged in the work of generosity. And when we give, even it might even be a bigger check than we gave over here, right? Um, but we resent it or it's something that we felt pressured to do. Our spirit is not connected to that work or uh, potentially even building resentment and frustration. Um, and so when we look to Jesus, we say all the time, we're looking to Jesus as the model for how we should live. And the generosity of Jesus is best summed up in probably the, the, the primary verse that most, I think, American Christians uh, know, which is John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. So like just timing out there, like for God so loved the world that he gave Jesus, like thinking about that just right there, that one quick sentence that we can sometimes scoot over and move on to the rest of John three sixteen. God so loved the world. What, what, um, compelled the act of generosity that Jesus would come on our behalf was not pressure was not, you know, some human, you know, sharing a sermon, you know, like, like uh, pressuring God into sending Jesus right now. These are all just kind of funny things to think about, but I guess I'm saying it doesn't say God felt so pressured to make things right that he sent Jesus. No, it says God so loved the world that love was the motivating factor for the generosity of God. And then when we see Jesus, we see Jesus in the same way. The, the, the generosity of Jesus that flows as he sees people hungry and he decides he's going to create, do a miracle and, and, and make sure that everyone's fed. It's out of his love, out of his, out of his generosity that he does this. He's, not, he, he's definitely approached with the problem, but it's not something to where he's giving out of this feeling of like, I have to. He's healing people left and right, and he's not doing it um, just because, you know, I guess I have to like, there's this picture of like, Jesus looks at people and I mean, Jesus even wept when his, when his friend passes, he's seeing the pain and brokenness of death in in the world. And he, and he weeps and it shows this connectedness, this compassion, this uh, desire, this, you know, and then, and then in raising this dead person to life, there's this generosity, this gift. And so we have in the gospels, 
a picture of who God is, that God's love sends Jesus. But then even in Jesus, we see love expanding, not out of pressure, but out of a deep desire to connect with people, to help people. And so we want to be those types of people that love motivates how we give and how we are connected. So one of the reasons like we don't talk a whole lot about giving at the Belong Collective isn't because, you know, this mic doesn't cost money and that camera that is recording right now doesn't cost money and wherever we're going to be in the future is going to have rent and all those things. We, we, we have overhead costs. Every nonprofit, every church has those. But we would rather you connect if you're going to write a check, if you're going to connect in any way in that way with what we're doing. Like if you're giving because you're like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to give to a church. That's what the Bible says. I have to give to a church. Um, I, 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 I personally, as a pastor, don't want you to give out of that kind of pressure or guilt that you've maybe been handed. I would rather you give out of love. So let's talk about this. There's this passage in 2 Corinthians 9. Let me read it for us. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So when I think about this passage, uh, we could say a lot about money. Like we could dive into all of Jesus' warnings about wealth, about abundance, um, and not just Jesus, James warns about this. He has, uh, the opens chapter five of, of his, uh, letter talking about this reality of like, we need to have a warning to rich oppressors, especially. And this picture of like, wow, your wealth is, you know, rotting away at you. Right. Um, we could talk about all of that, right. We could talk about Jesus's economic statements. Cause he says a lot about economics. Um, we could talk just over and over again about money. I don't really want to talk about money. What I really want to do is talk about what Paul's saying here. Paul's saying like, we don't give out of this like pressured feeling to give. That's the way we've been taught to give because it's important that you recognize like Paul is speaking to Jews who, who, who their entire life um, in this particular case, like has been set up in a way that uh, that they have been giving out of compulsion. And even when he's talking to Gentiles, their entire system has been set up, set, like set up to give under compulsion. Everyone is coercing people to give. Um, and our world hasn't changed much in that. Uh, the church <laughs> guilts people into giving all the time. Um, the business world guilts people into giving all the time. The nonprofit world guilts people into giving all the time. Um, but what we also know is true is that when people give because their heart is deeply connected to the work that's happening, there's, there's a sweet spot there. There's something happening that's good for the person that's giving and good for the organization receiving that gift. And now I want to expand this out because I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about even just giving your time, your talents like we, we we did a series a while back time talent treasures and just talking about how so often the church looks at money as its answer but the truth is is like time is a huge resource you have it um, you have talents and gifts uh, that I don't have and you can give those and so um, when we think about our values and we think about the community we want to be when we talk about uh, this being our value series this being like who we want to be we don't want to be a church that ever pressures anyone into giving a cent. Like this is not a faith community that's going to pressure people to give. At the same time, I want to be clear, like we deeply appreciate those who give. We deeply appreciate your sacrifice. And we know every, every penny given is a sacrifice for you. But we hope that that penny given is not out of a feeling of obligation from the standpoint of, I grew up in a church and I was told I have to give. If I don't give, God's going to curse me. If I don't give, God's going to strike me down. So I have to give this amount of my paycheck every single week to this because if I don't, God is going to hate me. Um, and if you think that's an extreme viewpoint to have, um, that is a viewpoint I've encountered multiple times in ministry. Um, and that's around like tithing and 10%. And we're again, we're, this isn't really the purpose of this conversation, but just to briefly go down that rabbit hole, there's a lot to be said about tithing. Um, there's a lot 
to be undone about tithing when you look at the even the Old Testament um, in the sense of uh, the purposes of it and the way in which it's been used even today. Uh, and, and, and the fact that like there were multiple tithes taken in the Old Testament, it would probably be more like, I mean, 22.3% you know, because it was a every three year tithe. Like there's just, there's all these weird things when you dive into the actual meaning of like what's being referenced when people reference the tithe, which one are they referencing? Just so much going on there that that's a sermon for another time. But the point I'm trying to make today is we want to be people who give out of compassion. We see a need um, we, 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 we feel a connectedness to an organization that's doing something that's trying to identify needs. This is part of the reason we don't want to be a church with a ton of overhead. We don't want to be a church that has so much overhead that we can't see a need and meet it or see a need and immediately uh, help fund an opportunity for that uh, need to be met uh, or mobilize our community to do that work. Um, these are all things that we want to be uh, known for. Uh, we don't we don't want to be a community whose money serves ourself or resources or talents or time serves ourself, but it serves outside of ourself. And this is why we're connecting with other nonprofits regularly. We're not trying to reinvent the will and, and create a new nonprofit. We're trying to say, how can we support you? And so this is one of the reasons like when we did the turkey drive, we found out last minute this was something we were able to mobilize for around Thanksgiving very quickly, uh, and it and it flowed out of this value. So I'll just kind of tell you how, how it went down. I got an email on I think Friday or Saturday before Thanksgiving, uh, sorry, a week before, uh, maybe like a week and a half before Thanksgiving on like Saturday that weekend, um, that just said that this community uh, had had some some. Um, some changes in who was going to provide uh, turkeys and that they were going to be short. And, uh, and this was the uh, Latin American Hispanic community in, center in um, uh, Harrisburg. And so, so emailed them immediately, determined how we would go about creating kind of the structure for this. Uh, our board had a conversation about it and then bam, we were off and running. It was so fast. And Part of that is because our value let us know this is a need. Can we meet it? Like, do we have the means to meet it? Is it something that we can mobilize for? Is it something that our community like would get excited about helping out families around Thanksgiving? And when we when we checked the boxes of like this would represent our value of, of giving compassionately, we immediately mobilized for it. And within less than a week, we had uh, given them um and I really think actually it all kind of fell together the week of Thanksgiving because we were getting them turkeys and they were like, hopefully we can get this out by tomorrow. So it's on tables for Thanksgiving. It was it was it was pretty amazing, actually, to see you guys step up and give in the way you did and participate in the way you did. And then um, to just I think we did something like 56 turkeys, 59 turkeys. I don't know off the top of my head, but but all of that's actually in our annual report, which talks a little bit about kind of our. A desire to be a generous church, um, which is on our website. If you go to our website, you go to the bottom, you'll see all the different um, numbers and things that we gave to this year. But the reason I'm saying that is because we want to even see needs. We want to be very strategic about needs we meet, but we also want to connect to communities, uh, to other nonprofits that are doing amazing work and say, um, the church you know, a lot of churches do a good job of connecting to nonprofits, but a lot of churches are also like, I'm going to reinvent the wheel and do it this way. And we're going to do this and this way. And we're like, we want to partner with organizations that are modeling um, just compassion, motivating their spirit to serve the community. And so as we find those organizations, we partner with them, we serve them and we, we help move forward their mission because in doing so, we're giving compassionately to the needs around us in our community. We want to be that kind of church. And um, hopefully this is something that excites you, that you're feeling this feeling of like, yes, that's, that's the type of community I want to look forward to. Like not a community that's like, you better give or else, um, but instead a community that like, hey, you don't have to give, but when you see all these needs that we're meeting, it's going to be really hard not to give like that. That to me is 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 the way uh, I feel. And, and, and I say this from the standpoint of like we all probably have friends that like we would do anything for. Right. Or like we would, you know, we would give the shirt off our back for um, now. We want to be made into the type of people who are seeing needs and having that posture 
toward the image of God in everyone, but we also have certain relationships that allow us the opportunity to step in deeply to particular relationships and say, okay, I'm going to meet this need in a meaningful way. And so, so we do, we step in and we meet that need. And what I think is interesting is something happens in our spirit. And this is where I kind of want to close. Giving compassionately, when we give out of our, um, out of our uh, gifts, whether that's our time, our treasure, our talent, when we give from that place, when we give in that space of, of love, of care for someone, and we, mo- we see the, the, the motive is that, not, not that I'm being pressured into it, but that ultimately like I wanna give because I see this need. When we give from that place, even when it costs us something, even if it's the shirt off our back, even if it's a big gift, even if it's a huge amount of time, like we all have helped someone move, right? <laughs> like that's like the, that's the test, right? How, how much of a friend are you really? If you help, will you help me move, right? Like when we give in that way, right? Um, we usually leave very satisfied. Like there's something in our spirit, a need that's met. And here's my argument and, and why I think we need to be a community that gives compassionately. And, and this will be where I close. I think we're designed by a creator who gives compassionately. We're made in the image of a creator who gives compassionately. It is within us to be the type of people who give compassionately. When we do give compassionately, we tap into the image of God within us. We are living out of that space in that moment. If we give reluctantly, if we give with all this bitterness, all this like, oh, I guess I'll do it. I mean, I have to. It's kind of the way that God is going to bless me. If I don't give, God's not going to bless me. And if I don't give, God's probably going to curse me. So I better give some money. If we give that way, nothing in our spirit is drawing out the image of God in us. And so may you give in that spirit. And if you can't give in that spirit, Stop giving for a while and start looking for things that excite you to give to. Things that make you go, I have to give to this. I can't, I can't look away from this without like helping. Um, and all of us can give. All of us have time or talents. Uh, I know so often we've been taught that the only way to give is financially. And I just want to let you know that is not true. You can give. You can make a difference. And um and I'm really excited to see over the next year, even as, as we roll back into hopefully soon meeting together in person again, all the ways that we might be able to meet so many needs that have existed in our world and, 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 and grown over our world in the, or grown over the last year in our world with COVID and everything. I think there's going to be so many opportunities for us to show up in meaningful ways to just put our compassion into action. And we want to be a community that sees those needs and steps forward and then spurs one another on to just grow in compassion to look more and more like Jesus. So join us in that work. These have been our values we've talked about over the last six weeks. We've talked about our six values. Hopefully you're feeling even more connected to our mission, to kind of what we are envisioning this community to look like. If you have questions, because I know we've talked about some different values and different ways that we might live those values out. If you want any more clarity about what we value, who we are, email me, justin at thebelongcollective.org. Let me know if there's a particular question you might've had that was sparked by one of the values or if there's something where you, you just need, you need more clarity or if you're, if there's any concern, I would love to answer that. I would love to uh, get the opportunity to chat with you about our values. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for us and just that um, ultimately our values would be shaped by Jesus. So join me in prayer. Good and gracious God, would you make the Belong Collective a space that values what you value? That we would look more and more like Jesus each and every day that God, we would not be motivated as so often the church has maybe been motivated, but that we would be motivated by you. That that, that even when we think about money and and, and time and and talent, that when we think about these things, that these would not be things that we pressure people into uh, sacrificing and giving, but instead that we invite people into participating in the generous uh, opportunities to give to see the needs that we have, to give compassionately, that they can be generous toward the needs that exist in our community and, they, and that we are kind of 
that connector, plugging them into these needs that exist. Uh, God, so often you did that for your disciples. You connected them to the needs that existed around them. You helped them see things that maybe they hadn't seen before, and you encouraged them to grow in compassion. And so continue to encourage all of us to grow in compassion as well. Allow us to see needs that we are uniquely uh, set up to meet, that maybe there are certain things about our community that allow us to meet particular needs in this area and beyond. And so show us those needs and allow us to have the, the bold approach to step up and meet those needs, God, uh, and make us into your image along the way. No resentment here, no, no frustration, no, no pressure, God. Allow that never to be something that manifests itself in this community, but instead that we're always growing in love and compassion, and that just forces us to actually have to put um, our time, our resources, and even our money where our mouth is because we just love something so much and we can't bear to see it suffer. God, thank you for the series of our values. Continue to grow our values. Continue to challenge us in what we place at the top of our list and continue to keep us open to your leading. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's digital gathering. We hope you have a fantastic week and please feel free to reach out to us via our website or any of our social media platforms. Have a fantastic day and thanks again.